What's up, Facebook? This is Kirby, and of course, you're on Kirby Q's Facebook page. I thought I'd do something um, this summer for you, the fans of Kirby Q. First of all, I want to say thank you for your support and patronage throughout the years. And um, as appreciation to that, what I thought I would do this summer is, um, as weather permits, and as I have the time to do it, is uh, come out and put some um, content out for you guys just here on the Kirby Q Facebook page or on the Kirby Q Instagram uh, page and appreciation for your support. And just share a barbecue tip or two <clears throat> on how to do something that, uh, and of course answer your questions or comments, your questions that you may have regarding grilling, smoking, uh, um, outdoor cooking, something like that. All right, so, uh, we're in the official grilling season, of course, you know, for uh, true barbecue enthusiasts, the season never really ends because we cook all year round. Uh, so, but I thought I'd go ahead and get it um, kicked off with talk about um, grilling basics, the basics of grilling. Um, you, most of everybody has a kettle grill and I'm going to, I ain't going to cam camera down to my favorite old Weber kettle grill and I do need to show us some love maybe one of the videos would be me um, doing a uh, re-seasoning this is a cast iron grate that I got from Cray Court a couple of years ago and I, uh, a couple of years ago and uh, I haven't really been using this particular grill uh, lately because I have the 270 GS and I've been using that as my primary grill but nonetheless majority of people will use a grill when it comes to grilling they're going to use something similar to to the kettle grill um some version of it <clears throat> whether well, it might be one of the uh, bigger uh, barrel types or this type and so what i want to share first is when it comes to grilling grilling is going to be different from smoking because first of all grilling you're going to be dealing with high heat you're going to be dealing with temps up to 400 and on up all right uh, 500, 700 degrees uh, is what you're going to be doing with grilling. And those are going to be your steaks, your hot dogs, your hamburgers. If you're trying to do hot and fast ribs or things of that nature, that's what you're going to be doing on your grill. Now, you can go low and slow on your grill, and that'll be something we touch on uh, some, somewhere during the course of these videos. But mostly hot and fast is what you're doing when you're using your grill. You want to hurry up and get a nice good sear on your food and you want to get it off and serve your company and guests right away. You can do veggies, you can do pizzas, you can do uh, again um, any protein, your fish, your, um, your beef, your chicken, your pork, turkey, um, all of that can be done on a grill and we'll probably do one or two recipes um, throughout the course of the, these videos just to show you different grilling uh, recipes you can do on your grill and again you don't necessarily have to have a whip or kettle whatever type of grill you have you're going to be able to pull off um, these recipes but and these principles are going to be applicable to any type of grill that you have and let me just change it up to myself now, uh, one of the things that you're going to want to do, um, the very basic, here's what I want to say, the very basic uh, grilling setup you want to have is what's called two-zone grilling. Now, what is that? Let me bring you in on this grill just a little bit. And we're going to go back down. Uh, can I get this up? As you can see, I have some uh, charcoal baskets in here. For two zone grilling, you're going to want to, if you have charcoal baskets or if you don't, don't make a difference. You're going to want to have your heat source to one side. All right. Then you're going to want to have a side where you don't have any charcoal. This allows you to control uh, your temperature zones. 
when you're ready to get your sear, you can put it over on your hot side. And then once you got your sear, you can move it over to your cool side. So you do want to have two zones drilling, a hot side and a cool side. However you want to configure it, don't necessarily have to be left or right and be front and back or back and front, however you want to do it. But you want to have two different zones. One is going to help present, prevent flare-ups. Why? Because once the grease and stuff starts dripping on this side and the flames start shooting up, you can move the food over to the cool side that doesn't have the charcoal. And sometimes you may want to put a water pan or something right here to help add moisture, to help one, regulate temps, two, to add moisture into the environment uh, of, the, of your cooking environment. To, uh, yeah, to help add moisture to your cooking environment. I'm shooting from the hip, so that's why I'm him hawing and uh, umming and all that other good stuff. So, uh, this ain't scripted. <clears throat> but, uh, that's why, it's, so that's what you're going to want. It. That, that's one of the main reasons, one of the good reasons to have a two zone thing is to want to help reduce flare up, help with temperature control of your food, and help manage. You can do reverse here, where you can start your food, let's say your steak, start your steak off on the cool side, then move it over to the hot side. And then I'm going to put this grate back in. Then you come out. All right, so that's going to conclude today's tip. Two zone grilling is what you, I'm sorry, and to finish that off with two zone grilling, you're going to also want to ensure that your air exhaust is on the opposite end. You're not going to want to have it directly over the hot end. You're going to want to have it going the opposite end or wherever the heat is at. So if the heat is here, I want my air air exhaust here this way the heat can come up and over my food okay rather than venting straight up and out all right not really getting much radiant heat from it convecting heat from it you want to try to get a convection heat going where the heat is coming up and over your food and then out all right so make sure that now if you have that one type of um kettle grill where you just got that one uh dial that's in the center Again, with that one, you're going to still want to make sure that it's off and to the side. But if you can control, if you have like a Weber kettle or some other kind of kettle where you're going to rotate where the air in intake is at, make sure it's on the opposite end of where your heat source is at. This way you get convecting heating uh, with your food. All right, as you can see, I got my 270. That's the big gray one right there. Uh, lit up. I'm... I got a little catering gig today that I'm working on. I got my two uh, gateway drum uh, smokers out, so <clears throat> I'm going to get started on that. But Okay, uh, Facebook, I want to thank you guys for, uh, once again for your support, and I'm going to try to put these out every Saturday. Uh, I may try to go live with them. As a matter of fact, let me know in the comments below and, and post below whether or not you prefer it to be live or would you just prefer to be a video uploaded so you can watch it at your leisure all right thanks facebook instagram wherever you're watching this particular video at i appreciate your support god bless y'all have a great day